walking out of the garage. It's actually pretty nice out right now. Got a little bit of breeze, but the only breeze that I get in my garage is when the fan's going, so. Sorry about the low light, guys, but uh, it is dark out. Let me turn you around. Do, 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 do. Well, it's really dark. <laughs> All right. I don't think you guys have ever really seen the garage when I've, uh, yeah, before, before I get situated. <laughs> it's, uh, Let's get some light going on in here, huh? All right. So, got the engine over here just kind of chilling out. It's uh, it's ready for me, for me to do the other half of the engine. I've got this side on, and I had a question about long blocks versus short blocks. And so, before you put your pistons on and you put your heads on, you've got a a short block. It was just the case with the uh, the crank inside of it, and your your rods and stuff assembled. But once you put the uh, the actual cylinders on, your heads and your uh, rockers with the push rods, you got a long block. So, so I got a pretty cool story about my new addition here. This little cart, and from what uh, I was told by the uh, the the lady that was selling it. Her husband that had just passed away, who used to be a, a Navy submarine diesel mechanic, got it from a hospital because he's always picking stuff up and he used it as a like a workbench. He has something mounted to it or something like that in uh, in his garage. So pretty cool. I love it when you can find old stuff like that to add to your your tool collection. Let's roll this bad boy out. I also want to take a second to talk about some of you guys that have uh, been, been subscribers for a little while. I've seen that uh, I uh, have installed different pushrod tubes than I did originally with the build. And that's because the pushrod tubes that I had before, the uh, the empty pushrod tubes that have a spring in there. Oh, the Russian. There was always a couple of those that I could never get to seal right, so they, they leaked, and that's no bueno. So these are CB Performance windage pushrod tubes. Let me take a look at them real quick. I got these seals by accident that uh, don't work. <laughs> this this end will work, but this O-ring, I think it's for like a Type 4 or something like that. So I've got some extra O-rings, yay. So let's, let's take uh, one of these bad boys and open it up. I do this one-handed. Okay. So first off, they're they're stainless steel, and you can see that they are longer at this end, and that's supposed to help out with uh, with the oil and the transfer of the oil back into the actual crankcase. So also, it helps it stand up whenever you go to put your cylinder head on. You guys that have put one of these things together before know what I'm talking about, how the pushrod tubes keep falling and stuff. Well, this helps out with that, so that's kind of cool. All right, it's time to put the uh, pushrod tubes in place before we put the head down. And this is uh, what I wanted to show you guys, which is pretty cool. See? They stand up. <laughs> so simple things, man. Making your life nice and easy. You still want to take the seams on these and face them up. Whenever you put push rod tubes in, you always want to face. So whenever you want put push rod tubes in, you want to face those seams up, guys. That's just uh, one of those tricks I learned a long time ago. I'm sure that most of you guys know that already, but seams up, seams up. So 
Watch your push rod tubes. Make sure they, they're they not pushing down on it. You don't want to. And you're, you, while you're torquing this down, you're going to be adjusting your push rod tubes because I do this in stages with my heads when I torque it down. Or I, I take it down by hand first, and then I just keep checking your seals on the bottom to make sure that they're flowing into the head the way that they should be. You don't want it to get off to one side because then you'll just have a leak. You'll be done with torquing everything down, and then you'll take a look up underneath and want your seal to be cockeyed off to the side. Don't want that. Inside the head itself, you got your uh, area where your your nuts go down, right? Your your washers and your uh, and your your big nuts to hold down the heads. Well, I put a little bit of uh, silicone. I'm actually going to try the uh, JLT for that this time. I'm going to see how this works. The KRLT, I'm going to use that inside here to seal up the uh, the head, keep oil from going through this area, and uh, we'll do that here in a second. So guys, I picked up this really nice torque wrench from the pawn shop. It's like really good quality. The only thing is, is that uh, it's got newton meters on it. So we're looking for about 25 foot-pounds. And we look at my little scale I got over here. Boom, 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 boom. And 25 foot pounds. Is about 3390 Newton meters. So we set in our torque wrench to about 33 Newton meters. 33 Newton meters on here. It has inch pounds and newton meters, so we're going to take it to. If you guys, you guys probably can't see that. It's so much glare. Thirty-three newton meters. Or actually, it's thirty-three point one. So there. That's thirty-three point one. And then uh, lock it down. Yeah, and we're good to go. It's uh, I think it's called Armstrong. You can see that like this used to, <laughs> this torque wrench used to probably belong to a toolkit somewhere, and now it's part of my toolkit. All right, let's do some torquing. So you guys saw that the torque pattern changes for the final torquing on the heads because the first torquing is to really collapse the push rod tubes. All right, guys, we're back, and it is the next day. It's cooled off a little bit because the sun's gone down, but it has been a steamer. <laughs> really hot. It's supposed to rain to cool things off a little bit, but we haven't gotten any of that rain yet. So what are we doing today? We're going to take a look at the valve geometry on the engine right now because when I decked the top of the uh, the block right there, we, we decreased the distance between the tops of the cylinders or the cylinder heads to the actual uh, engine uh, case itself. So there's a, been a decrease there. I actually picked up some new push rods. Too. Hold on a second. Original bug pack push rods. Uh, there's, there's some history to bug pack that uh, most guys don't know about. The, they were a pretty great company out in California that uh, I think were bought by MP. I believe that's correct. They were bought by Impy, and the quality is fantastic. If you can find bug pack parts anywhere, pick them up, guys. They, they are, uh, you can't beat them. So, so I picked up some uh, push rods that have been uh, 100 thousandths cut, fly cut, so that that should take up a little bit of distance that I have. And I actually have them installed already on the engine. So let me turn you around, and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the valves and the, uh, the rockers, and uh, talk a little bit about valve geometry. So I guess the first thing really to ask is what tools do you need to check your valve geometry? You know, what what do you need? Well, first off, you need the, the simple tools to install your rocker arm assembly. This is the, These are 1-4 ratio rocker arms that I picked up from AA. And uh, they look just like the MP ones. So my friends got MP ones and they look, they look identical. Uh, you need a dial indicator. This dial indicator I got off of, uh, off of Amazon and... It's all right. It's pretty cheap, so I'll link it in the description. Let me uh, move this out of the way for a second. So, there, now you can see. Zoom out a little bit. Whoop. 
So the first part of rocket arm geometry, what you're trying to do is evenly distribute the load between the, the face of your, the front of your rocker and the, the base of it. So not like the, the tip where the, the cup, where your rocker, uh, rock, uh, push rod goes into, but the actual base of the, the rocker. I'm gonna bring you around to the side now so you can take a look at that to give a better explanation. Okay, so right here we have the front of your rocker and then you have the back of your rocker. Right at this point, like I was telling you, not the cup, but the flat portion of your rocker. This is what you want evenly distributed at half lift. So if you're looking at that, it's like, it's like this. So this should honestly be, you know, you, you want this to be evenly, even across at half lift. Now what is half lift? Depending on how your engine is set up, like this is, this is a uh, FK8 clone type of uh, cam and one to four ra ratio rocker arms. So my lift is between 525 to 530. You check your lift, you know, you confirm what your lift is by using the dial indicator. You set up your dial indicator either on the, uh, the spring itself, the spring head, which is that's usually where I set mine up, or you set it up somewhere else. You can set it up on the back side if you want to too, but I always set it up right here. And then uh, you watch the full motion of your rocker as it goes up and down to determine what your full lift is. And then you divide that in half to get your half lift. You rotate around again to your half lift point, and then you check and see where your rockers are. That's the first part of doing rocker arm geometry. I know, right? Am I boring the crap out of you? The second part of rocker geometry is actually shimming your rockers correctly so that they land on the either the lash caps or the the tips of your valve in the center or on a stock application off to the right side a little bit so that it can rotate the valve as it's going up and down let's take a look at that for a second so like these huge flat feet that I have on these rockers make it make it really easy. And these are all lined up pretty well, but sometimes what you'll have is you'll have too much, either too much play, which this just has a little bit of play, which is fine. If you have too much play, then you have to shim it to get rid of that play from back to back. Now, also you want to check for your foot alignment on the face of the actual valve tip. Mine has uh, lash caps on it, and they're all centered up really well. But a way to check that is before you um, before you put your rocker arm on, is to put some black uh, permanent marker on your lash caps, and then run it over a few times and check and see where your strike marks are on your lash caps to see if you need to go right or left. So those are two main things you want to check when you're doing your valve geometry. One, you want to check and make sure that the front the leading side of your rocker or the face of your rocker that makes contact with the top of the valve and the base of the, the rear of the rocker that, that engages your push rod is even at half lift. The second thing you want to check is to make sure that your rocker arm itself, the foot, is on an application like mine with the, with the rocker arms that I'm using, it's centered on the lash cap. But on a more of a stock application, like if I was doing this on my 40 horse, my smaller engine that I have, I want it to be offset to the right just a little bit. And there's, there's more play in those rockers too because of the, uh, the uh, spring washers that are there. So, and a lot less power. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a, take a measurement of half lift and see where I'm set up right now with my new push rods and the, uh, the new deck height location. All right? All right. Now when you start your adjustment, you want to start with your rocker at the... Uh, at its very highest point where it's where you've got like your zero lash like mine's zero lash so I can spin my I can spin my my push rod but I don't have any movement really in, in the face so it might take you a few try, a few tries to get the preload correct but once you have the preload correct which I think I got it now we'll go ahead and run it through and see what if we can identify the uh, the lift Forty, 
fifty. Five fifty. Five fifty. Five fifty. I have five fifty lift right now. So divide five fifty in half, and then eat your half lift. So half of that's two seventy five. So now we're gonna take it back to zero because we're at the bottom. So let's go ahead and just take this to zero. And we're looking for 275. One, two, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, 275. Let's go ahead and drop down. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way so that you guys can see where my lift is and if everything looks in balance, okay? Let's see, more of like this. Yes, that's the way you wanna look at it. <laughs> so when you're looking at it like this, it looks better <laughs> than if you're looking at it at a down angle. So let's try it again. Boop. And boop. Hey, look at that. So this distance, see, you got the back there and the and the face. The distance looks right when you're looking at it level. Uh, well, pretty darn close. So you want this to be even, like the the. You can use the uh, the top of your sil your cylinder head here as your reference point. You want right there and right there. And mine is pretty darn close. It might be off a little bit, but that's pretty darn close for evening out the load between the two, the two points. So that's uh, that's the first part of uh, your rock arm geometry. Now, how do you get that? Well, you get that by using shims on your actual uh, cylinder block and bring you around. And mine's got pretty big darn shims that I made. You can see them right there, kind of. Oh, okay, maybe not so you see these shims i made those out of solid, solid aluminum because i needed to shim them out pretty good to get to get where i am right now let's yeah, see can you see them i don't think you guys can see it very good so yeah there's the shim so that shim down there is what gives me this the uh my rockers the height that they need to get the geometry correct between the front and the back of my rocker arm. And this comes from VW Darren. He's the one that I learned this from. Watch one of his videos. The spring right here, fully compressed, you should be able to get a 60 thousandths, uh, which I ended up using like a uh, 230 thousandths uh, feeler gauges and stick them into the bottom of the actual spring. And you should be able to get that in there. If you can't, then you're probably gonna have a binding issue and may uh, have some failure on your springs. So. I'm not an expert, but I kind of think that he is. So there you go, guys. That's the basics of rocket arm geometry. Like I was telling you too, these little shims inside of here, the little shims that are in your rockers, you can buy shim packs or shim kits to shim those out. I have a set that's from, uh, where is that set? I have a set from uh, CB Performance that I bought just in case I needed them. And I think that I will need them on the other side, but that's it. So my rocket arm geometry is good. I was right by the, uh, the push rods, the 100,000s fly cut push rods, made up the difference that I needed to. And what I'm gonna do now, let's see what is next. I'm gonna start putting the rest of this damn engine together. <laughs> All right guys, that's skinny for today. All we really cover is uh, this rock around geometry. Some of the guys out there wanted me to go over it real quick. It takes time, and uh, you're going to spend some time messing around with that adjustable push rod, uh, push rod that you can get to figure out where your geometry needs to be. Uh, take your time. Be patient with it. Uh, it's, it's a process. You're going to jack around with it quite a bit. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today from Jason with uh, JW Classic VW. I hope you enjoy this uh, little tutorial on rocker arm geometry. Um, just some basic stuff. If you have more questions, hit me up in the comments below. Uh, if you need a channel sticker, uh, join the Facebook group. It's down in the description below as well, and I will send you your very own JW Classic VW channel sticker. Also, coming up soon, because I'm going to have the engine back together and in the car, we're going to finish up the IDF reverse manifold uh, install and review. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting my car back together so I can drive it. It's actually getting pretty nice out right now, and tonight would be the perfect night to go for a cruise. 
Saturday is here in uh, Kima. They have a little bit of a car show at the Home Depot, like every Saturday. Every Saturday when it's nice weather, they have one, and I like to go there. As always, like, share, and subscribe. If you have friends out there that would enjoy the content, anybody Volkswagen, bring them on over. Uh, there's a bunch of other Volkswagen guys, YouTubers, down in the description below as well. Hit them up and throw them some love. Let's throw them a sub. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, thanks to uh, good old Mike for giving me a little shout out with my sticker on his channel. That's awesome, man. And uh, I look forward to soon being on your show. Let's do an interview, a remote interview. <laughs> All right, guys, this is Jason from JW Classic VW, and I'm out.